Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Land, Place of Finding Guys of with Plus. We got some more greed. I mean, we got a, it's, it's greed. We got some greed. What can I say? It's greed. As, as the day is long. Kane, why not? As you started hard mode, you idiot! <laughs> well, you know what? Okay, forget greed mode for now. Not because I have any, like, attachment to the streak or anything, just like... Why not, right? We're already here. We got stuff to do as Kane. If we we could really do either path, we haven't gotten the Polaroid or the negative complete. And of course, you know, we're coming off a hot run. We had a good opportunity to succeed in the last run and we seized it. Let's do the same thing here. The underlying message is like, again, your boy, that's me, takes a nihilistic approach to Isaac, as I've said many, many, many times in the past, probably ad nauseum. Just because we're getting the oh, a little off kilter here doesn't really matter. We're gonna do everything. How much do you want to bet that like revelations will come out before we finish this save file? That's the race, I guess. You never know. And that's the other thing with Nicholas, dude. Is like I don't know. They'll probably like announce a release date, but I could just as easily also see them being like. You know, we're just, hey, it's out tomorrow. Like, the thing that every, uh, every E3, there's always, like, a pet theory that's like, dude, what if Nintendo says there's a new Metroid and it's out right now? I just realized we're on an Excel floor. We definitely should not have gone to the cursed room. Well, you know, you know what company did that? Let's test your, you know, do you know gaming. Um, Sega did that. I believe it was with the Saturn. They announced it at E3, and then we're like, it's for sale right now. And then it failed miserably. So the one case study that I can think of in games is not necessarily the, you know, an example that should give people a lot of hope. Secondarily, you know, you can't just do that. You know, you gotta give people time. Not just YouTubers, obviously, but, you know, you gotta give... Consumers time to get ready, you know scrape together the 60 bucks you need to order the game or even more to order the console, etc, etc Plus it kind of just ignores the impact of marketing in general. It's like being like yo What if at comic-con Marvel was like an infinity war part 2 will be in theaters This weekend like the announcement would be incredible everything else you would be like really this weekend Oh, I gotta move some stuff around like okay. I'll tell you what I'll see it when I see it now, probably could have gone for the Tinted Rock instead, but hopefully we'll get another bomb and it won't matter. So we would like to fight Larry Jr. It's Little Horn. We want to fight Larry Jr., or Dingle, I guess, for that matter, uh, because the flush item is really, really good against him. Dingle is an instant kill. Larry Jr. would just do a lot of damage. But obviously, like, you know, you can see for yourself this run with Anemic and... Uh, Flush is not particularly strong, but there's still plenty of time to pull it together. You know what I think that strategy works really well for, though? Is, like, YouTube videos. Even for streams, you know, if you're like, our surprise 24-hour stream is going to start right now. There are people who, like, would have gone to it that can't as a result of that. They're like, man, I can't commit to 24 hours like this. I need a more advanced notice. But if you were like, my magnum opus YouTube video is out right now, I think people would be like, I'll make an effort to see that. I'm so excited, by the way, for YouTube premieres. I'm interested, sorry, I said it in the French-Canadian way. YouTube premieres. Allez, YouTube premieres, uh, s'il vous plaît, vous, uh, voulez-vous coucher à la, avec la salle de bain, s'il vous plaît? I think I was like, would you like to lay down with the bathroom tonight? It's kind of a personal question. Either way, um, would you like to sleep with the bathroom tonight? That's my nickname in college, the bathroom. Don't ask. Um, I saw, like, there's really, like, the YouTube elite has gotten access to it so far. You might think I'm part of the YouTube elite. I'm very much still a YouTube upstart. One of these days, maybe when in my second decade on the platform, we'll get into that YouTube rewind sort of situation, uh, if it still exists in 10 years. But either way, um, you know, they've gotten access to this feature called YouTube Premiers. And I'm interested to see what you guys 
think of it. Because I've looked at the tweets replying to it. I've, I've openly been kind of excited about this feature for, you know, since they announced it at VidCon. Um, but some of the... Oh, so bad. Some of the press is a little bit negative, at least from YouTube fans that go like, you know, I think it was Linus Tech Tips. I saw a tweet like, hey, we're going live with our premiere for this in a few hours. We'll be hanging out in the chat room watching the video with you guys and, you know, answering your questions. A lot of the comments were like, if your video's done, why not release it like right now? And I got to tell you, that comment stuck with me as somebody who on an average day doesn't upload a single video that was recorded within the last 24 hours. Unless the backlogs are like really small. It's true. Like you might be watching this on September, let's say 28th. Seems fairly realistic given the Isaac backlog. Maybe 26th actually. It's pretty small right now. But today is the 24th. Crazy, right? 30. Not really. Correct answer. But still. You know, the premieres for me as the creator just seem so obvious. Um, because like I'm already releasing stuff that premieres it just you don't all watch it simultaneously sorry I put the card in front of the horse here but anyway um, what a premiere is is that like at 10 a.m. your video goes live but it's almost like a live stream version of it everybody watches simultaneously until it's finished its runtime and then it actually goes live for video on demand viewing on the platform so you kind of get the marriage of like that live stream style environment where everybody's watching it for the first time together as it happens. Not live, but as it happens. Um, so you get those that community aspect that I think is missing from YouTube a lot. Like on Twitch, you know, when something happens, you might get 50 people that all react to it and say, you know, slightly different things about it. On YouTube, it's more like people watch a half hour video and then drive by and leave a comment. Which is not bad necessarily, it's just different. And I, I definitely prefer like the more live stream style format. So I'm interested to see, you know, if they ever roll it out. As with most stuff on YouTube, there's only two ways that YouTube rolls stuff out. They tell nobody about it. And then, uh, oh baby. We shouldn't have taken the HP, but. Um, they tell nobody about it. And then just release it. And you're like, Boom, surprise, apocalypse. Or... They uh, tell everybody about it, and then it takes six months to roll out to people that don't have a diamond play button. But either way, you know, I understand. You got a big platform. It takes a while to get there. Premieres for me seem to make a lot of sense. You know, instead of an Isaac video going live at 6 a.m., it goes live at 6 a.m. Everybody that wants to watch it at the time that it comes out watches it together. They can chat, have a more social communal aspect. You know, I can be in there for some of those videos in the comments and be like, you know, Head off some of the criticism at the past, maybe. Lead to a little less toxicity. And, uh, you know, you get that kind of community nature instead of just like, oh, we're all forced to watch this guy's videos because he's entertaining, but watching his gameplay mistakes is torturous. I'm excited for the possibility of the feature is all I'm saying. And if you're wondering, like, well, what's the point of a premiere? Well, if you don't see the value in that, uh, you know, live stream sort of style commentary from the people watching I encourage you to give it a try honestly because I really think like for me honestly online media for me twitch is great I love it of course especially as a creator twitch has been very good uh, you know what I'm actually gonna do this room why not but there's one thing that could be better than twitch and that's if they could put like sports on a legal live stream platform and then you could watch it with a chat room with like you know 10 what happened <laughs> three dollar bill with 10,000 people watching simultaneously like that's cool it's like being in a digital version of the stadium so I like any kind of content that has more of that like live reaction my personal two cents on the issue. Anyway, uh, second secret room, probably. Let's go. It's pretty strong. Uh, our Mega Satan chances are very, very low right now because we've taken a deal with the devil. But at the same time, you know, when you take, you get brimstone, at least at this point in our lives, we take it. It's like when a restaurant offers you free bread, you know? I would never order the bread. Sometimes I've been to restaurants. It's usually a little hoity-toity fancy restaurant, no question about it. But, you know, they'll be like, in the appetizer section, there'll be like a bread basket featuring our, you know, store-made whipped butter. And you're like, nah, dude. 
I'm sorry to tell you. I'm glad that you're not the Olive Garden. But, you know, you gotta take some things away from the OG and give away that free bread. I will say, though, you know, like we talked about food a little bit in the last couple of episodes. How weird is it that, at least in some restaurants, bread is like the, the amuse-bouche of choice? And I'm not trying to be like, oh, well, think about all the carbohydrates in it. It's more just like, bread is, it fills you up. And I know that every, this is how you can tell, by the way, if you've ascended to true dad status. If you have like a theory for why the restaurant does it. I, as, I remember when I ascended to dad status, I was having dinner with my parents at uh, a Canadian Red Lobster. And they brought out four Cheddar Bay Biscuits. And I thought to myself, why bring out four Cheddar Bay Biscuits when there's three people? And I realized, it's, it's and I don't know if this is actually true. Somebody that works at uh, Kara Foods, please let me know. Or Yum Brands, I don't know where Red Lobster is in this day and age, and in what portfolio it exists. I don't know if we've had dog tooth, actually. But I realized that, you know, with a table this size, they might bring out... Pardon me, another coffee bird. It's just disgusting. They might bring out a number of Cheddar Bay Biscuits. Yeah, okay, I know where the secret room is. Where the number is equal to the number of diners plus one. And you know why? Here was my hypothesis. If you bring out three Cheddar Bay Biscuits, everybody's gonna take one, eat them, and then the server's gonna come back and you're gonna be like, hey, can I get some more Cheddar Bay Biscuits? If you bring out four, all three people at the table are likely to take one. Please. Please. I just don't want him to move. Anyway, see? That's why. And then there's going to be one orphaned Cheddar Bay Biscuit sitting in the basket. And then you need... And not every family has somebody like this. You need somebody who's going to be like, does anybody want this last Cheddar Bay Biscuit? And then you need two people to say like, nah, and then they eat it. And then you get more Cheddar Bay Biscuits. Like if you as a family plan out a strategy, you can get around this... Uh, Technique, but I genuinely even now ten years after Coming up with that hypothesis for the first time. I do believe it. That was so bad. I Do believe that you know with one of these multi-million dollar Franchises there's a genuine chance that they you know Did a strategic meeting and they're like what's the optimum number of Cheddar Bay biscuits to serve to save on Cheddar Bay Biscuits in general, which are not necessarily expensive to make, but you know, the less Cheddar Bay Biscuits people eat, the more profit you get. And everybody loves them. I mean, you can't not love a Cheddar Bay Biscuit. But it's just weird to me that bread is like the amuse-bouche of choice, because like, I think people, you know, if you got a dadly sort of theory on it, you might be like, well, they serve you free bread so that you're content to eat less food in general. And I mean, I guess if there's like, they can serve you smaller portions for your main course because you've eaten so much bread and you don't notice. I don't know. That seems... All I'm going to say is that seems one step less plausible than the Cheddar Bay Biscuit N plus one theory, okay? But maybe you're right. To be fair, I can't think of... What would be a better free restaurant meal accoutrement? I don't know. I'm trying to think. I don't know why my brain is going pork rinds. Mm, yes, I'll have the the chicken francois uh, in linguine with a light uh, white wine sauce. And uh, can we start with the pork rinds, please? But, you know, endlessly snackable. Yo, that means there's a secret room and like a black market or something going on here. That dog was excited. Not a black market, just a chest. Still, I'm not gonna belabor the point, but I still think it makes no sense that the <laughs> crawl spaces now sometimes contain a single consumable, but okay, no big deal. Thank God there's an item that can identify crawl spaces so I can spend four bombs looking for a chest that has three cents inside of it. Uh, but it could have had an item like Kane's other eye. So what are you complaining about, NL? You know when I said I wouldn't belabor the point? I'm belaboring the point. 
cool. I don't work in restaurant management. I just have eaten in them before. And as a result, think that I know how to run their business better than they do. You guys ever... Uh, I've never done this because I'm not a jerk. And I think this is a very jerky move. Do you ever have friends that do the George Costanza method of tipping? Where they leave like five single dollar bills out on the table? Or in Canada, five loonies? And then every time your server does something that you perceive to be wrong, you pull one away? Man. I would go so far as to say... If you do that, by the way, here's the thing. <laughs> Where are you eating? <laughs> this sounds so... It is What I'm about to say could come across as a little bit classist, I guess, okay? But if you're eating at a place where, you know, a tip on a meal may be for you and your spouse, or your boyfriend, girlfriend, partner, whatever, you and your boys, if your tip's gonna be five bucks, and then you're within the normal tipping convention, you're not at a place where you need to put that much pressure on a server. I mean, a five dollar tip is like a, it's a good tip on like a 20, 25, 30 dollar meal, you know? Relatively reasonable within that range. Dude, let's go for it. So I don't know why, you're not dining, you're making it like a Harvard exam or something like that, but really you're like eating at Red Robin. That's just a jerk move to do to the servers of Red Robin, is be like, you're basically doing another job interview right now. Stop that. Now I know, uh, lull North America tipping culture, blah blah blah. I don't have control over it, okay? You just, it's one of those things about North America that, you know, once you give you put any scrutiny up to it whatsoever you go ah, that doesn't really make sense it's just like well what's what's so hard to understand it's just every time you go out for a meal you just factor in another 15 to 20 percent uh, of the cost based on how you're feeling on that given day plus the quality of service that you have plus the change in your pocket like it's this it's the easiest thing on planet earth um i understand the reason for tipping i tip i don't want to be the guy who doesn't tip give me the sun well so we'll use two of diamonds and then we'll blow this up. Sure, give me carb. No, 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 give me diplopia. And then blow it up again and try to get something even better. Not really good enough. We're stuck with this one. This one, I guess. Pretty bad. Yo, still pretty bad, but... I think I will use the converter, weirdly enough. I'd rather have one red heart. Now, do we want the Bible? I know we left a key back there. Uh, I kind of think we want the Bible. Just because... I mean, flush is not worth anything, really. I'm just saying. Count me in the camp that is like, you know, pay servers a living wage. And then remove tipping culture to some extent at least or minimize it, okay? Other countries have done it. I'm all in Canada. You're already paying like eleven dollars for a fast food combo from McDonald's, and I order it from a freaking robot. And by the way, I will continue to do so because I think it's like it's just a better consumer experience. And I apologize, but it, it's the honest to goodness truth, at least in my experience. However, that robot's not getting paid fifteen bucks an hour. Why am I paying so much for fat? I'm getting like neither of the benefits. You know, the workers are not being paid as much as they possibly could stand to make to survive in, you know, one of the most expensive cities on planet Earth. But then also on top of that, like, I'm ordering it from a freaking robot. How much is the robot getting paid? I Look, I clearly misunderstand the labor costs involved in this. I'm just saying. I don't want to be the streamer who talks business because I think, oh, you know what? Get dusty. Uh, I think that that's ignorant a lot of the time. I work in an industry where going to work means literally zero overhead, which I gotta be honest with you, it basically owns. I don't even have gas. Like there are there are YouTubers and streamers who drive to an office. They at least have gas. All I have is flatulence. Now we've never had the jawbone, but I don't really want to do boss rush in. I mean our parameters for the run, like our every stat is pretty good except for HP. That's our only concern right now. But HP is the stat that probably matters like second most for a boss rush run. 
I always find it funny, you like... I just want to see, have we done Hush? Yes, we have. Okay, so we don't need to put a Rush in here, and we also don't need to fight Hush, just in general, but... Um, one of my favorite video game news items that if you look for it, you'll see it happen like once every three months, is like people that have never worked in finance, myself included, guessing what's happening to a company based on their stock price. It, and I'm not saying that it's irrelevant, but I'm just saying I think it's taken out of context a lot. I think it's like science reporting. Again, I'm kind of ignorant, so I might not even... I, if I'm being horribly ignorant with this issue, I hope that you will illuminate it for me. But I also hope that you will list your credentials. And the credentials are relevant to the industry. Because I don't want, you know, the blind leading the blind. I will admit that I'm blind, and then somebody with sight come forward... Show me your optometrist prescription, and then together, I'll, I'll let you lead all of us forward, using me as a conduit. Um, very bad damage. The red hearts, though. Anyway, it's always like, you know, Electronic Arts has had a lot of backla backlash this weekend, and uh, their stock price has fallen 4%. And I'm like, dude, on Thursday, it went up 11%. Just because, you really, I don't know, maybe this is true, maybe... People that are like huge stakeholders in EA are reading the subreddit, <laughs> you know, Star Wars Battlefront, and they're going like, oh, I don't know, EA, this has got, I'm selling. I think you guys don't have a good head on your shoulders. Or maybe it's just the, you know, part of it is that, and there's also like a natural ebb and flow to things. It's always like, you know, well, the Nintendo stock price went up 33% after they announced Animal Crossing was coming to Switch. I'm like, dude, you've been working. You've been a games writer for like 14 years. Neither of us know what that means, but one of us is pretending. <laughs> so like a weird financial analyst aspect of games reporting on occasion. That's not to say that, you know, that information doesn't affect companies, obviously, because I, I know that it does, but still. <laughs> I don't really know where I'm going with that. There's no bit to, to mine there. I get very bitless the hungrier I get. And I gotta tell you, I'm not quite at ravenous levels right now, but definitely between episodes. Oh. I, I have an exciting anecdote for you. I have finally exhausted the, the stock, not the stock, but at least the selection of British cheeses at my local grocer. I can move on to a different country's cheese. And I can also give you the definitive ranking of English cheeses, okay? So if you're from England, get ready, because um, I'm about to offend you. Good cheeses. I'm going to abstain from cheddar, because it's a hard cheese for me to judge. Cheddar has been just, you know, my default cheese for, like, my entire life. And the cheese I got yesterday I have not consumed yet. But I understand it's extremely popular, and it's a little cheddar-ish. It's called Red Leicester. Anyway. Cheese that I could do without having again in my entire life. I don't even know. I'm This one, I looked it up on Wikipedia, and uh, I'm not even sure if it is a cheese or if I accidentally bought basically like a, a product that is made from 20 cheeses. But it's called uh, Shropshire's. And it's a cheese blend. It's like a layer cake of cheeses. I gotta say, I'm not into that. I'm not into a Neapolitan cheese. The individual cheese cheeses involved help. Totally fine. As a product, I just I never knew what I was tasting for. You know, sometimes you get a little uh, Lancashire cheese. Sometimes you get a little Gloucester, Gloucester, whatever. Look. You guys invented the language, then you changed the rules. Don't blame it on me. This is like my, my taste buds never know what to look for in it. You know, surprise is not necessarily one of those emotions I want to feel every time I eat. Regardless. That's a low tier option. Top tier options? I have to admit. Uh, I had a Cheshire cheese. Liked it a lot. It was like a British feta. I thought it was fantastic. I would get it again in a heartbeat. Double Gloucester. An underrated version of cheddar. It's like cheddar below the radar, you know? 
It's like an advanced stats cheese. You're like, oh, I want to get Artemi Panarin on my team. But then when you look at the advanced stats, you figure out, you know, if you just signed like a Tyler Johnson, you get a very similar kind of Corsi 4 stat at a real fraction of the price. So anyway, double Gloucester, keep it up. Mid-tier cheeses, got to be honest. I'm sorry to my fans from Lancashire. Not really a huge fan. Thought it, it was okay. It was just, you know, mild. Not the most interesting cheese. I felt, at least. And that's it. That's the great, the big book of British cheeses. <laughs> There's obviously more than that. I've never had Stinky Bishop. They don't even sell the Stilton at this grocery store, so I don't know. This has been Northern Lions Cheese Hour. I will return to this when I have tasted that red Leicester. Yo, I don't know what $3 bill effect we got there, but it was well worth it. We must have gotten like Proptosis or something. Well, no, Proptosis narrows at the end with Brimstone. Anyway, can I just say like I'm so happy that we did choose to do this cane run? Okay. Sure. Here's the thing. We can do... Uh, th this run is possibly strong enough to do what we're trying to do here, and that's beat Delirium. <laughs> Amazing. But then secondarily, um, we can get two birds stoned at once by doing a Mega Satan Cathedral or Mega Satan Darkroom run. So I think that assuming we win here, this run, it makes the most sense. Now, I would love to stop taking damage. G really good start. Just walk right into an enemy and a bullet. Um, I would love to stop taking damage. I would also love to stop getting nine lives before I fight Delirium. But that's the thing. is like, how are you to know? Now, top tier items. I mean, you're looking at them right now. If we could... Excuse me, sir. If we could get homing tiers, but like for real. And then like damage upgrades, but like permanently... I'd be a real happy man. Those are the big gets right now. Certainly, I still think... You know, we should have a, above a 50% chance to beat Delirium here. But the more, the merrier. The more chance, the merrier chance. Don't need any of those. And if you dispute that, that's academic, man. My favorite superhero. We're not going to need a bomb. We're not going to need one extra key. You come down here, it's about two things. One of them is raw skill. So we'll have to default to the other one, which is hoping you get some decent items and don't find delirium too soon. <laughs> if you get those handled, the world's your oyster. I'm excited. Not a good pill to take. Speed up, actually still relatively useful. Tears down, obviously not what I'm looking for. Should be a second secret room? Hmm. Luck up, that's fine. Not worth too much, but at least we'll get consumable drops. Explosive diarrhea, retrovision, range upgrade. Okay. It's a long trip. To have found no boss room so far. We've basically cleared out like a quarter of the floor. Everybody walked the dinosaur. Nope. So we should be coming across like some terminuses, or as they call them in the real world. Termini. Terminators. There's there's a many jokes there. The real joke is that it's actually terminals, but. It's one you can kind of no soap radio for yourself, you know what I mean? Probably not. It's a reference that doesn't make that much sense. Here, I'm just trying not to spin my wheels like conversationally as I uh, hopefully approach what I assume is going to be a boss fight. And so maybe there are no boss fights on this floor. That would be merciful if you just gave me a chest and allowed me to leave. I'd be okay with it. I just don't think that that's very likely to be the way that things go here. 
Maybe I'm wrong, though. Okay. That very well could be Delirium, so... Normally, I don't take this level of due diligence, but the game's been kind of, you know, cagey with me. So, what I'm going to do is be cagey with it, and I'm going to look for the rooms that are, like, guaranteed to not be Delirium, and try to do those. Like these. Should not be Delirium. <laughs> oh, you can't make this stuff up, man. You got to admit, if you look at that map, that really isolated boss room, traditionally that's probably where we would expect to find Delirium. Now, it's not fair, because that's obviously not how the rules of the Delirium boss room work, and we might have been overly attached to sentimentality, but... Oh, we have fun here. And I gotta admit, it's going just fine. Should stand far away. To maximize our lump of coal damage bonus. And as you can see, it's doing a darn good job just melting Delirium down. A little bit unfair, it's okay. There he is. That's a lot of damage done, man. Rarely do we get a... Oof, good freaking God. Rarely do we get a room of this size to see, you know, what Lump of Coal Brimstone can really do. But it looks like we're pretty much guaranteed to finish this one off. Very, very good news. Look at that. Some threading of the needle as well. Well, so far so good, right? Can't complain. And the run is over, so 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 far so good by the end. You must be set. Wait a minute, have we already done? We already have done Delirium as Kane. What the? Well, it is still fun, but I am a fool. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It was a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. And of course, follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Jordan Lion. Be notified when I go live in the future. Don't miss that live content. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See ya!